Jones, as they call it, plugged in and persuaded him to make a 12-volt version, and that actually worked. So all of these scenes, study cam scenes, were done sending the video off by wireless, just as if we were a little TV station to Stanley and the watching crowd at the, the monitor, which became tremendously important when we finally got into the maze. But at one point, Stanley must have had a horrible thought that the neighbors in Borum Wood, these ranks and ranks of houses just over that little hill, all of whom had big yaggy antennas aimed at London for their TVs, he became afraid that they might be sitting there watching what we were shooting in the morning. And I made the mistake of imitating a Monty Python woman in the crowd of women going, Ooh, poor Mr. Brad. Stanley's being very cruel to him today. Or, Ooh, it must be the 24 Distagon lens. It's vignetting around the edges. The, Women got more sophisticated as the shooting went on. And he overheard me and then was afraid that his stuff was being seen by them. So I assured Stanley that the studio walls would never let the signal out because they had a wire mesh in the wall. And then I took a portable monitor outside and walked around and to my horror, quite often here and there, would be a perfect signal from inside the studio by some weird chance of RF propagation or whatever you might say. And Stanley, you know, believed he knew something about every form of human activity and had large arguments with me about antennas for receiving the signal and mine for sending it and so on, many of which turned out to be, he turned out to be right, which was even more disturbing. But what I did was I learned where the signal didn't come out, so I offered to show Stanley, and we walked around and with this little battery monitor, and I took him to all the places where the signal didn't get out, so he was quite satisfied that nobody anywhere could have seen what we were doing. And so...